joining us. Welcome to Mike Marshall's Mandolin for the Holidays. I am Joe McDonough, Vice President of Marketing at ArtistWorks, and thank you for joining us. Sorry we're so late. Great to this be here. No problem. We understand. These darn computers can just be a uh, devil sometimes. When they work, we love them. When they work, we love them. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, uh, Mike, I just wanted to, um, here, let me get uh, everybody in with us. We've got with us right now um, a, a, a cast of characters. Um, first of all, I want to introduce Scott Tickner from Mandolin Cafe. Scott, are you with us? Yes, sir. Okay, that's great. And um, we also have two Artist Works students, Tim Fowler and Phil Rundell, which we will meet um, later on in the broadcast. But the very first thing I want to do is um, uh, ask Mike Marshall to play and to lead us in with a song if you have one. Thanks. Mike. Yeah, I started playing a little bit of. Um Joy to the World. It was one that I taught actually this week. It was kind of fun. The students seem to enjoy it. It's, it's neat too because you can play it so simply. Uh, and then I'll, I'll take off and do a little bluegrass version of it. And then Lord only knows where that might lead, okay? <laughs> Mike, that was fantastic. That was Thunderous fantastic. applause here. That's right. <laughs> Thunderous <laughs> applause. Now, <laughs> um, I want to. Uh, um, I've got. I've got many questions um, to ask Mike, of course, set up. But um, there's just a few housekeeping items that I wanted to go through uh, before we do that. Um, first, um, we want our audience, uh, and we have a hundred and more viewers right now, and growing rapidly. Uh, to tweet your questions to Mike and uh, and for any of our other guests, and the way to get your question on air is at sign artist works. So if you if you go to that uh, Twitter handle and just send a question to at artist works, uh, my producers and I will be monitoring that, and we would love to hear from you. <laughs> we would love to hear from you. Okay. Um, now. Um, just a quick, few quick words about the Mike Marshall School of Bluegrass Mandolin at Artist Works. Uh, some people find this hard to believe, but I assure you it is a well-established fact that for about $25 a month or less at artistworks.com, you can take bluegrass mandolin lessons from Mike Marshall, and you will get feedback and personal instructions, instruction not from someone who plays like Mike, but from Mike himself. Uh, and as a special offer to our live listeners, good for the rest of this weekend, Use the promo code LIVE20 to receive 20% off any ArtistWorks subscription to Mike's school or any of the more than 30 other instrument schools at ArtistWorks. And people I have been asked by Stella, our production assistant, to emphasize this important point, that music lessons make wonderful holiday gifts. And yes, <laughs> the LIVE20 promo code can be used to save 20% on ArtistWorks holiday gift cards. Uh, people, we have a really great show for you today, and though we're starting late, we're gaining momentum rapidly. 
So we have lots of holiday mandolin music and some special surprises in store. Some of those will have to stay surprises for now. Uh, but about 55 minutes from now, towards the end of this broadcast, we will announce the winner of our one year of lessons to any Artist Works School giveaway. The winner has been selected from among some 400 live listeners from around the world. So we, uh, we're looking forward to that. Okay, that's the end of the commercials, and now on with the show. And uh, Mike, you, thank you for joining us. It's well, thank you, Joe. Uh, I know you pulled out a few hairs, I'm sure, in the last 20 minutes. But you, 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 you pulled the rabbit out of the hat, and we're, we're with you. We feel your pain. And, uh, <laughs> well, we're just going to enjoy this hour together. We'll push it to 1030. I hope folks are cool with sure. that. Um, we'll just enjoy our time. Hopefully people will have some questions, and we'll get to hear from from a Mr. Uh, Mandolin Cafe there, Scott Tishner, thank you for being with us. Hey, and Mike, how are you? <laughs> Tim and Philip, too, two of my students who have been very active on the site and wonderful to work with. We look forward to hearing uh, from them as well. Say hi, Tim. Oh. Hello. There's Tim. Tim, where are you? You're... Um... Where, where are you I'm going in the to heart of the bluegrass in Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, you are in the heart of it. <laughs> and uh, Phil, where are you joining us from? I'm from Cambridge in the UK. UK, the original Cambridge. Thank you very Absolutely, much. The real one. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have been written. <laughs> Well, I'm Joe McDonough at uh, Artist Works headquarters in uh, the Napa Valley, California. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. And what I'd really like to uh, to do is is um, Mike played us in uh, with a beautiful version of Joy to the World, uh, and it actually transitioned. It started out simple, and then it became a bluegrass version, and maybe it had a sort of hip jazz structure to it towards the end. Um, Mike, can you tell us about the different genres that you play and uh, and that you teach on your site? Well, you know, that's uh, obviously a big part of what my site is about is bluegrass. That's really at the heart of it, and that's why most people come there. But like most of us who play the mandolin, uh, depending on, you know, what age you are or where you lived or what got you interested in it, uh, many of us love lots of different kinds of music. And, and for me, the mandolin is... It's just been a vehicle uh, for discovering all these different beautiful styles of music from all over the world. Um, so, you know, I grew up playing bluegrass in Florida and did a lot of that for many, many years and continue to to this day. But uh, the mandolin just led me to jazz naturally and classical music and then later Brazilian music. So what's cool about the site is that we get those kind of... Um, uh, submissions coming in from the student people playing all styles, whether it's Irish music or what have you. So um, it's been a, a great way to connect with people of all styles of mandolin playing. Well, fantastic. Um, just before um, you know, we proceed, I do want to remind our listeners that you can submit questions for Mike, and um, we will um, through Twitter. And the handle to reach to reach us and to get your question on the air is at ArtistWorks, at sign A R T I S T W O R K S. Um, now, uh, Mike, uh, I'm going to switch gears again. Um, and really, if there's anyone at the center of a worldwide mandolin community, it has to be you. Um, tell us a little bit about your busy mandolin life. You're touring, recording, composing, arranging. Um, well, sure. Well, there's a lot going on, of course, <laughs> and especially with two children in the in the mix and a uh, wonderful marriage to a great mandolin player. So it's a very musical home, and uh, I've managed to fit all of it in somehow, you know, gigging, uh, coming back, teaching. One of the coolest things about uh, working with Artist Works has been that I can I can stay connected with this community no matter where I am in the world, you know. So I can, uh, you know, be in a hotel in Memphis and send a video submission to somebody, a response to one of one of my students' videos. Uh, you know, before we go too far, maybe people who don't understand how artist works works, 
Um, it's, I, I just want to make it clear that uh, it's, it's a very different kind of uh, music learning in that the students record videos of themselves playing and they send that to me through a secret little uh, website that only I can see. I watch that video and then I create a second video, a response video to that. And these two videos get linked and put on the site. At that point, anybody can watch those videos. They're personally for that student, but you can watch somebody else's video and learn from them. So it's a unique way to um, interchange, exchange ideas and for people to, uh, to see each other and learn from each other. And it's a growing library. It's been three years now for me teaching on the site, and um, gosh, there are thousands of video responses now because I'm doing them every week. And yeah. so the company is great at cataloging all that stuff by level and by style of music. Um, and so you can search for things that would be interesting. You know, I'd like to maybe bring in one of your students to, uh, to comment on that. And uh, this is Tim Fowler joining us from Kentucky. Um, and, hi, Tim. Hello. It's no, been great because we've, we've seen each other at a couple of workshops around the country. And then I'm not sure how long you've been on the site, Tim. How, how long has it been? I, I think I'm starting year three uh, in January. I just renewed. Oh, so. you've been with us since almost the beginning. Yeah, so so uh, you passed the test, and I'm, or, or I still need to learn a lot. <laughs> well, you're you're a real studier. I mean, I I just know enough about you now, mentioning things that you've worked on over the years. You played a lot of jazz guitar and classical guitar, and um, I mean, how is it for you? It's a it's a new way to learn, right? Absolutely, you know. And to what to what Joe said, you know about. Um, you know, it's a it's like a master class. You hear you hear this talk, and and so when I when I studied classical guitar, you know, it was always a treat to go to a master class. Uh, but they were rare, right? To to get to a master class, that was maybe a couple times a year. Uh, mm. This is every day, and, <laughs> and so I can watch I can watch you teach a lesson on a shoro on or on bluegrass, uh, and I can mm. see how you interact with other people, and and I learn no matter what level you're teaching. I always get something out of it, so so I find it hugely powerful. Cool. Yeah. Um, Philip, you want to chime in here? I mean, how how's it working for you in terms of? Well, I'm curious, actually, not to turn this into an infomercial, infomercial, but <laughs> how do you actually use the the site, uh, kind of on a weekly basis or however often you can connect with it? Is it mostly about the videos I send you? Or is it uh, deeper than that? Do you dive into some of that other material? Oops, is Philip there? He is, but there may be a delay. Yeah. Do you want me to talk now? Yeah, I was curious okay. from your yeah. perspective, Philip. How do you actually well, use the site? For me, it's a, for me, it's a it's an all-embracing experience. It's quite extraordinary. It's the first thing that I turn on in the morning. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no Some way. people might call me fun. bad, but <laughs> it's, I find it really absorbing. I love watching the videos of other people. Um, the videos of myself, uh, 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 I find them incredibly useful, but I learn just as much from watching the videos of other people. Um, sometimes people say things like, uh, is it frightening having to do this and be exposed to the the view of other people? And I say not at all. It's an incredibly supportive community, and um, I think that's one of the wonderful things about it. Not only is Mike encouraging, but all the other students are. It's incredible. It's like jumping into a big warm bath. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Here, <laughs> because that's a big one for many of the students. The the fear of putting a video up that. You know, I'm going to tell you what you did wrong, right? And then everybody's going to watch that. And, uh, I know it's a big one for many people. Uh, Tim, you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so it's, um, it's not like that at all, right? I mean, um, certainly there are times when, when you'll say, oh, you know, that's a C sharp, not a C natural. Uh, but it's so much deeper than that, right? We, we get into phrasing, and you'll say, well, here, here's a different way to phrase that. If we finger it differently or place it up the neck, um, 
you know, we we'll we'll talk about especially with Bach. It's it's so complicated, mm. and there's all these different right answers mm -hmm. for how to finger it. You you can do it a million ways, and you know, we'll argue whether the Thiele way, uh, you know, is is the right way or or Katerina's way or your way. They're all different. Yeah. Cool. So I try to keep that in mind as a teacher. You know, yeah. <laughs> not hit with quite a heavy hammer. Uh, <laughs> Well, and shine light on that. <laughs> I'd like to ask a question of the students. I mean, um, is uh, do you find it useful not only to exchange videos with Mike, but to see the videos of other students? Well, yeah, that's what that's what we were just yeah, kind of yeah. expounding. Well, hmm. oh. yeah. I mean, it's like Philip said, a, a lot of us turn it on, uh, you know, first thing in the morning or at lunchtime when we have a break. Uh, to see what the new postings are, and you know, I, I know, you know, for example, with Philip, I always watch his his videos because because he does yeah. stuff that's interesting to me. Uh, <laughs> also, each like student it. has their own page within the site. That's also something people oh. should know. And with, on your own page, you you can list your favorites or or ones you like to come back to. There might be a certain video exchange that you're you're working on that piece of music. And so you've captured so and so who already sent it in, uh, and uh, and you get to go back to it easily. So you can create your own kind of folder within the site. Hey Mike, mm -hmm. can we change uh, just change directions just a little bit here and and talk about um, you know when you came into the mandolin community, um, you know who were your idols and and you know how did how did you get started in, in particularly the focus on bluegrass and mandolin and you know what was your first heartfelt moment? Well I grew up in Florida in the early 70s so you know I, I've always said that every musician no matter what age and it seems to enter uh, this acoustic music world uh, at, at a certain period and whatever that moment is for them, when they see somebody play these instruments well and their their minds blown, uh, that's that's the aha moment for them, right? And for me, it was you know probably Sam Bush, seeing Sam Bush when I was 13 or 14 years old at a teenage. I had a teenage bluegrass band at the time, and we drove all the way up to Lexington, Kentucky. No, Bowling Green, actually. <laughs> to see the Newgrass Revival. Scott Tishner, as I'm telling this, I realize I'm probably telling <laughs> your story as well. <laughs> uh, we must be similar ages. Uh, but, you know, Sam Bush and David Grisman, they were slightly older than me, and um, so that was the mind blower, because those were the guys who were taking bluegrass and bringing other elements into it, and that's what really intrigued me, was the idea that it wasn't necessarily just about bluegrass or just about the mandolin, but it was this you know, it was the beginning of the idea of kind of world music, you know, because you know, young people from the uh, larger cities were discovering all kinds of music. He might have been a bluegrass player, but all of a sudden, due to radio and just mass communication, we were hearing Indian music and music from every place on the planet, and so it affected how we approached bluegrass. And those guys were the first ones to really do Right, Scott? Can you That's right. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Um, well, I, like you, I uh, remembered. Uh, I, well, I kind of backed into it because I was a guitar player for years before that. But then I started playing mandolin, and I and I so I heard you and heard David in the quintet, and then uh, heard John Reichman, and I flipped out about all of those guys, and it was just it was just great, and. Uh, Mike is not going to tell this story about himself, so I am. He has been in bands that not only recorded Fox on the Run once, but he's, been, <laughs> he's recorded the song twice. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud to say. <laughs> Sunshine Bluegrass Boys from Lakeland. <laughs> we did it, man. I've actually seen that album cover, and it is... It's, you, you, you didn't, I, I insist that you mail those in to me. <laughs> I can give you big money. <laughs> it's like the, it's like those picture your prom pictures when you get to be yeah. about forty. You just That's, go, I what wow. was I thinking when I bought that suit?" <laughs> Katarina still thinks it's cute. 
sport. <laughs> now, now at that time, Fox on the Run and 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 other great um, bluegrass standards were they were they written? Or were you listening to guys play and just learning from the playing that you were hearing? Or yeah, I mean, for the most part, in those days, there weren't even you know like DVD instructional tapes. In those days, I would buy the LP. Well, no, I would order it in Lakeland, Florida, and wait six weeks for it to arrive. arrive. And then it would be like gold, you know, I'd have this LP, yeah. put it on, listen to it for six months on, in rotation. And then in those days you had a turntable that you could turn down to half speed, mm -hmm. and so you could transcribe the solos by ear. And that's what I did. I learned from uh, listening to those records and taking it note by note by note. And that's one of the ways I'm teaching my students. In fact, this just this past month, I decided to take a CD that was really inspirational to me uh, by Tony Rice and Ricky Skaggs. And Ricky Skaggs plays beautiful mandolin solos and kickoffs to this just guitar and mandolin duet record. So I've been going through that record. Oh, look, we have it here. <laughs> and um, taking the solos and literally showing the students how I would transcribe those solos. And in some cases, I put it into a slowdowning device, and I go bar by bar. And it's almost as if we are transcribing this solo together as a group. And, and it's hopefully helping people see the process you know, of right. learning by ear. Because nowadays, you can like buy transcriptions of solos. But that's like reading a piece of classical music. That's not really getting into the heart of how you play the music and understanding the swing of the music. And the real feeling to it, right? Learning this stuff, it's an oral tradition. So learning it by ear is, I think, as important as any piece of music you can pick up. Yeah. Anybody want to add something to that? Oh, oh here's uh, Phil. Can I say something? Sure. Please. Well, I, I put that CD in my car mic so that I hear it over and over again. So I'm still working on that first track that you uh, you went through, okay. uh, which is brilliant. But you're absolutely right. It's just repeating and repeating in, in as I drive the car now, and it's mm. sort of sinking in. And okay. uh, and it's a really nice project you're working on that particular CD. Thanks for that. Well, as I see bluegrass, it's a. I mean, every style of music is a language, you know, and you got to get at the at the the phrases of that language before you start putting it together. You know, there's very specific ways that the mandolin gets used in those bluegrass classic tunes. You know. Certain kinds of double stops that are just nice sounding in that movement and licks as it were. Uh, so by learning it phrase by phrase, solo by solo, I find that you then capture this collection of things that you have to say. And you begin to see overlap. Oh, this little kickoff that he's doing in the key of G. When you do it, I mean, you, know, you learn some other song in the key of C, and you realize that it's the same set of notes but in a new key. Maybe it's faster. Right? But you begin to realize that it's the same basic syntax, the same information is coming at you. I can hey. make the picks and match these pieces. Uh, hey, um, uh, Mike, uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, requests from on the Twitter channel, and by far the biggest one is, have him play, have him play. Have him play. Too much talk, too much talk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs>
little old lang syne. What was that first one? Santa Claus is coming to town. There you go. It'll hey, be here tomorrow in Germany, folks. I gotta tell you, because in Germany it's December sixth, and you, the kids put their shoes out and, yeah. and, uh, outside the door, and then Santa comes at night and puts stuff in in the shoes. There you go. <laughs> Is it really the phone box tradition? We've been doing it in the fifth all these years. Only a day off. (laughs) Sixth. That's a fifth. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mike. One of the things that um, came out of that beautiful uh, uh, solo was, you know, the art of improvisation. Yeah. And um, you know, I know at Artist Works we sometimes. Bring in students who have you know, some classical musical training, and then mm-hmm. you know they fall in love with a vernacular style, and they fall in love with a new instrument. Then we have to kind of teach them how to improvise. And what are your thoughts on that? Uh, your approach that you take at your school? Well, I, to me, I start with um, learning tunes. You know, developing a body of, of like bluegrass. So much of the the licks that I was talking about earlier really come from these traditional fiddle tunes. So I always tell people that you really got to get a bunch of those fiddle tunes under your fingers, just those basic melodies, you know. And old Joe Clark. Uh, just before breakfast, you know, there's a good ten or twenty of these tunes that are just the body of work that, that embody the language. Once you've got that stuff down and you're playing a bunch of those. At a certain level, they don't have to be fast. You just, you know, you can get through them. Then we begin to look at options. You know, we'll take a tune like, uh, like, like Red Haired Boy. And we'll say, well, what, what other way can we play that so that it's still Red Haired Boy? And I'll literally go through phrase by phrase and help them understand that what we have here is is like target notes. We're trying to get to this A note. We can get there any number of ways. And it still serves the same purpose within the context of that tune. And the very it's really about variation at first. I would call it variation is the first step before it gets into a pure improv, like free improv thing. Uh, and so this is how I, I break it down for people so that it's kind of manageable. You know, even a tune like Old Joe Clark, you know, that's the, the skeleton of that melody. Well, you can play it, you know, double the notes. You can drone. You can add slides. And then you can begin to play what I call like fiddleize it. So you play a different note every note. And now you're getting into like, wow, it still sounds like old Joe Clark. That's really cool. But now you're playing like this much more elaborate, almost like Bach style uh, ornamentation around that. that. But that skeletal melody is still there. Right. I think that's really important. That these, this is the way I step the students through it, anyway, and begin to get to that point where uh, they they can start to improvise. Once in a while, I get a student who will just send me, you know, they're they're already improvising in a jazz way on something. Yeah. And for that kind of students, a very different approach. But for the, you know, beginner or the or the person who comes from classical music, this is this is how. I Cool. Well, phenomenal. Um, it's really intriguing, in, in, intriguing instruction, and um, I wanted to uh, uh, sort of riff on that a little bit. We got a, a request in the Twitter feed, and mm-hmm. um, it was something very specific. But just to give our viewers a sense for sort of your teaching style, um, Swing Fifty One was sort of the request, and and our mm-hmm. listener. Was very interested in the chord changes involved. Um, At the Tony Rice tune, um, now you're 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 talking probably 35 years ago. 
<laughs> but I could probably, you know, give them a little uh, insight very briefly. It's D major seven. D minor seven. G. F. B flat. Boy, I'm tapping the memory banks now, man. This, there's like that little hamster wheel going at you. Yes. <laughs> Brian, am, there's heat coming out. <laughs> I am suspecting a rat here, Mike. I'm going to ask my producer to check where that tweet came from. <laughs> but if he sends me a video, this is what will happen. I'll go back to the original recording that I might have played on, or the second recording of that tune, and I'll learn the tune again. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll send him a response video where it will really seem like I, I really just broke him down on that. Um, well, but it's a very common way that I, uh, I get stuff sent to me all the time that tunes I literally don't know. And I'll have to go find the music and spend a little time with it. Particularly things like Irish tunes, for instance. You know, there are people who just they play. There's tons and tons of those tunes. You know, I've got my 10 or 20 that I can play, but, you know, there's a book of that stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of loving the site for that reason. It's forcing me to, to play music that I might not have chose to go look for. Well, that's... Uh... That's great, and I just want to emphasize for our viewers, you know, we Mike just dug into the memory banks from something 30 years ago <laughs> and put that together in front of the entire world. <laughs> okay, and um, and so that was really amazing. It was only about eight bars, though. So yeah, you know, but okay. <laughs> okay. there's been a lot of music you've learned between then and now. So yeah. People ask me that a lot, like, where, how do you store all that stuff? In fact, uh, especially when you start getting into, like, all the Brazilian choro music, it's pretty intricate. Yeah. Jazz tunes, fiddle tunes, and now there's classical music when you're trying to learn Bach. It, you know, it's, these are big oceans. Each one of them is a, is a lifetime of work. And, and so uh, I've approached music with this. It's always been about learning for me from yeah. day one, and it hasn't really stopped. You know, for me, it's every day I'm I'm working on something. You know. Yeah, it's a, the lifelong learning ethic, which yeah. you know, and and frankly, it, it, uh, if there's one thing perhaps that's uniting us in this world is that um, you know, ev everywhere and on every continent, um, we all have to adopt that. You know that sort of mode of operation because the pace of change is incredible, and yeah, we have to stay ready to learn every single day. Um, I uh, uh, want to take just this opportunity to um, uh, uh, announce that uh, the kind of teaching that you just saw there uh, is what you will receive at Mike Marshall School of Bluegrass Mandolin and Artist Works. Uh, and if you're interested in joining my school or any of the other more than 30 instrumental schools that we have, um, we, for our live listeners, we have a promotion code that you can use when you enroll on the website. And the code is LIVE20, L-I-V-E 20. And um, so if you've ever been interested in learning the mandolin and you'd like to have personal instruction from Mike Marshall, um, that's a great way to get it right now. Okay. Um, you know, Mike, uh, at this time, uh, we announced some surprises. We had some confusion in the beginning, but I, that was perhaps the big surprise <laughs> that I was. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, we did announce, uh, announce some surprises and a special guest. So I'd wonder if you'd introduce our next very Please special guest. We could find our special guest here <laughs> nearby. Oh, I see someone coming around the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, Hi. please welcome Katerina Lichtenberg. Hi, nice to see you guys. Big applause. Hi, Katerina. Thank Such you. Such I'm here too. Just happened what to be What are you doing here? <laughs> this is a hangout. We're hanging yeah. out. Wow. Well, um... <laughs> Um, I do now. Yeah, as as producer of the program, sort of, I have to. I just want to tell our listeners that there, uh, uh, 
Um, Mike and Katerina's small children are asleep in the in the walls behind them, in the rooms behind them. We're in them. Germany, folks. We're in Wuppertal, Germany. Um, it's not even four o'clock here. Katerina has made all used all of her skills to make sure they don't wake up and run in front of the camera. But frankly, I would like that. <laughs> I love <laughs> this <bar. Me> too. <laughs> um, and. Um, I guess uh, you know uh, to welcome you, Cat, and to give you Katarina, and to give you a sense for um, you know you come at the mandolin. The mandolin is a great instrument of the world. Every continent has played the mandolin. Dozens of countries have a mandolin tradition. But you and Mike kind of come from different angles of that mandolin tradition. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Let's start with the opt <laughs> uh, optical view. Hers is pregnant. I have a tailor. <laughs> And so it looks very different. And this is what everybody in my world considers is a mandolin. A real. A real mandolin. mandolin. <laughs> so and then when they see Mike's instrument, they think, oh, what is this? A little you guitar. Know? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's I, so funny how different uh, you know the instrument is all over the world you play the mandolin and then we go to Brazil and there's another kind of mandolin, the bandolim and so and they all have the same tunings with yeah. I, I have to I want to interject here. I spent an hour yesterday Googling the difference between the fiddle and the violin. Okay. <laughs> so oh. you have there two instruments, two different names, exact same instrument. Now Same. <laughs> no difference. <laughs> they call it a Geiger over here in Germany. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. But it's still a fiddle. It's you know, yeah. it's our Persian calls it a fiddle. You but have they, one name, two very different instruments. I mean, you can look at them, but they, they, you know, this, obviously they're in the same family in terms of sound. Yeah. So this is a like a, the um, classical mandolin in Germany. What 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 people play here, and uh, in Italy. Uh, you have the same uh, ball back mandolin, but it's a little bit skinnier, and uh, so um, I play also with a very different pick. But you know, I also play sometimes Mike's mandolin. So at the end, it's it's more the player than really the instrument. Uh, of course, uh, this instrument is made a little bit to get a different sustain, longer. So, a lot of harmonics, yeah, harmonics in the sound. It's not made uh, to play, uh, you know, by standing. Sure. Uh, because uh, it's harder with the ball back to, to stand in a band. So, you know, there are many different things. Um, why you, came, you came at that instrument really in a different environment. Well, you, 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 you've, yeah. you've lived in a variety of European countries, but it's really the, cat, the academy. Is that right, uh, Katarina? Sorry, where I'm uh, coming from? Where you're studying, yeah. where you're stu uh, at the conservatory, yeah, conservatory here in Germany. There's one place where you can study mandolin at that level, at the conservatory level. Katarina went to that. There's one. Uh, there's different places in Europe, but there's one professor position only uh, in Europe for this instrument, and um, so this is what what we uh, we had to play, and also we are used to play, but. Um, Yep. Yeah, it's, it's it's also the the way how you produce a sound and, and how you how you do it. So you can do a lot of things also on on the Gibson mandolin uh, with North the technique. Field, you know, it's, it's more also about the how you play it. Uh, right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Katarina is a real master at um, at uh, the history of the classical mandolin styles that have happened. As you said, the mandolins been around for a good 400 years and uh, I got to witness Katerina putting together her curriculum for artist works and she knows as much about that older literature, all the old methods that existed in the different periods of the mandolin, the Baroque, the classical era, the Romantic and she put together the most extraordinary uh, curriculum for studying that music. So Yeah, the mandolin is so Beautiful. You you play it really so many years, and what's interesting about the mandolin that each period brought also a specific technique for the mandolin. So in the Baroque and classical era, 
there were specific arpeggio techniques like uh, where you glide through the strings. Multiple downs. Yeah, or. And, uh, and then, in, you know, after 1789, after the French Revolution, then there's a big hall uh, with the Mandarin literature, and uh, in 30 years later, it becomes very pop popular in Vienna, and uh, this Mozart and Beethoven wrote for the Mandarin. And then it's again starting sleeping a little bit, uh, the period, and then you, it starts the Romantic era with a lot of tremolo. <laughs> Which was not, uh, you know, played in the Baroque time. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, I know um, you've you've worked together in um, transcribing, composing, and arranging um, many um, mandolin classics, and I, I understand you've been working on Bach recently. That's right. Yeah, we have. <laughs> um, Love. Well, we would love to hear you play some, if you have it. Oh, okay. Mike has to get his big mandolin. I'm going to play the mandocello <laughs> now. This the mandocello, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well, at least that has a different name. Tune just like a cello, A, D, G, C, but it has the pairs of strings. And what we did is we took this uh, very famous music of Johann Sebastian Bach, his uh, 15 uh, two-part inventions, and we put together our own arrangement of it. Basically, I'm playing the left hand of the piano, and Katarina's is playing the right hand in these arrangements. So it's really reading pretty much right off of the page. So we'll play you a couple of these inventions. Just a one couple? Two, just yeah. number one and number eight. Okay. Uh, if you play piano, you probably know this music very well. But, uh, but here we are. Mm. Invention one. <laughs> This girl has taught me more about playing Bach than anyone I've ever come in contact with. It's been a delight. If you can imagine living in a house with these two mandolin players, it's <laughs> insane, I tell you. <laughs> our kids, first three years, they never saw something else than a mandolin because also every my students sometimes come home and they all play the mandolin, you know, so it's a little bit... Everyone ridiculous. in their life is a mandolin player. Well, yeah, so finally we got a piano. <laughs> Any guitar. One of the things that I I I learned from a, a music uh, friend of mine was the complexity of Bach is a, you know astounding, you know, yeah. and and I think it's intimidating to a lot of musicians. So, um, yeah. so you, you know the fact that you just jumped in jumped in and did that live for us is really amazing. Well, wait a second. While we were trying to get online, I heard Mr. C Scott Tishner playing a little bit of this uh, cello suite. Scott, tell us about your you're really working on this stuff, man. Oh, I, I, I thought yeah. of you as more of a swing bluegrass guy, but no. <laughs> okay, Scott, you're on camera. <laughs> oh, I, a guy I played with quite a few years ago, um, he was a steel string guitar player, and he, he encouraged me to, to play some. And, and uh, pretty soon we knew, I think, all of the, uh, the French suites in E. And then oh. we started going into other stuff. And, wow. and I... Yeah dabbled in it for years and and Mike knows this on um, Monday afternoons I get together with an electric bass player that plays that can read really well and we play Bach duets <laughs> in fact he can play your um, the one uh, 
where I wrote the uh, counterpoint. Yeah, he, he actually learned that on electric bass. It's pretty oh! cool. Wow. <laughs> Great well, music. While we have you on the screen, Scott, I mean, you've, you've done as much for the mandolin as anybody in the world, so I just want to, if I had a hat, as cool Thank as you're you. to it Thank right you. now. Thank you for doing all you do to just shining a light on it. What a great idea. That cafe is amazing. The Mandolin Cafe. Thank you. Yeah. It's mandolincafe.com for our, for our viewers who, uh, who have, haven't been there, and it's really the center of the world for everything mandolin. So, uh, amazing place. Um, I would like to um, sort of interrupt the proceedings a little bit and to announce the winner of our one year of free lessons. Wait, diminish chord, please. <laughs> <laughs> and that person is Ken Lawson. Ken Lawson. <laughs> Ken Lawson. <laughs> so we will send you an email to confirm, Ken, but you are the lucky winner from our one year of free lessons at Artist Works giveaway. And I think it's now an appropriate time to announce the special news. That among the many schools, more than 30 schools that you will have to choose from, Ken, you can now learn classical mandolin from Katarina Lichtenberg. Okay. Yeah, and um, her school will kick off in the uh, uh, in the January time frame, probably towards the end of January. We uh, we've completed all the video lessons, and we're now doing transcriptions, and we're. Um, uh, we have a uh, extensive production process where we generate fundamental, uh, intermediate, and advanced lessons, and we package that up for you in a community environment. And then, of course, as part of the Artist Works platform, you get to exchange videos personally with Katarina. So uh, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you and you can do this in several languages, folks. Yeah. <laughs> in Bulgarian because her mother's Bulgarian. Merry Christmas in Bulgarian. How do you say that? Yeah. Uh, actually, Chistita Novogodina they say it for New Year, but really, like Holida, Holida means uh, Christmas. But okay. we always celebrated it in Germany, so I don't actually remember. <laughs> <laughs> and she went to a Russian school, so if you're Russian students out there, please send in your videos. English, Russian, Bulgarian, German. I'm, I'm working right now on my, on my uh, accent, you know, a little bit Kentucky accent. So that I <laughs> then you got to help us out. Yes. Um, Jack Daniels will help. A lot of Jack Daniels will <laughs> bring, tune that in for you, Katerina. Well, I have to tell you, folks, this curriculum that Katerina created is is as extensive as you can imagine. She steps you through it bit by bit by bit, all these different techniques. It was so much fun to prepare it, actually. But first I thought, oh, wow, there I can do it, you know, in just a few weeks. And then I got more into it and more actually each, it's, it's became like a tree. It started with the middle of the tree and then I got all this um, branches. branches and then on the branches were all, all these little leaves and then, you know, so it's, I actually learned myself again repeating all those pieces and picking out actually, trying to pick out the best pieces I loved from really and breaking it up to the beginner and then making it more interesting step by step and uh, bringing it to, to everything, you know. So I start pretty early with all the basic techniques, but I'm keeping the pieces more easy, and then in the in intermediate, the yes. pieces become interesting. And Very I gradual. played almost on all the songs. A lot of the songs the have, second voice. Yeah, oh have a God. teacher voice and a student voice, and we recorded all of her teacher voices uh, in advance, and you'll have that to play along with. And then when we recorded the lesson, she played the student voice. So you have this accompaniment. How many pieces, Mike, do you remember? Uh, it's like 168 or something. <laughs> this were only the pieces and the accompaniment on top of it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's oh. a massive, but very, very <laughs> comprehensive, very complete curriculum. Yes, I think. I want to, uh, uh, you're getting into something very important about Artist Works, and I, I uh, want to recognize our founders, uh, David and Patricia Butler, because um, the company has a mission to bring music to the world, and one of the aspects of that mission is uh, to capture and distill these great musical traditions. And I think, frankly, Ekaterina, you know, I know it was a lot of work, 
And um, it was a labor of love, but it was also a great gift to humanity that that material is now on the internet, preserved now for the end of the time, and available to everyone on this planet. And yeah. so, thank you. Pretty cool. We had to transcribe. Got to hand it to Amy Burkham, who's been transcribing the stuff and putting it into Sibelius. Because in a lot of cases, she was working thank from you, very Amy. old manuscripts that were almost impossible to read. So we got all that stuff cleaned up. And yeah, and you—that's that's 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 um, you know the, the the work of an archaeologist in some ways. It really was. <laughs> you have and you have saved that and renewed that now for future generations. I got to hand it to Artist Works and how they manage the website. Well, the way you guys, you know, if anybody sends me a video that doesn't play for whatever reason, all these different computers and different systems. I send it over to you guys, and within 10 minutes, that sucker's fly. I don't know how you do it, but it's very impressive. Yes, yes. Very I, to having this kind of lesson. What I also like a lot uh, is the idea that I, even I recorded 168 pieces or how much ever, but I can add more and more. So And also people who, people who would send pieces I might don't even know that's possible. Then you know they will also be available. So it's actually growing. This yeah, is what it's amazing. Cool. When you print a book, a method, then that's it. You you're know, done. you're done. But here you can add things, and uh, I think, and also to play it live and really show what you do. Actually, how can you explain this in a book? Would be much harder. Hey, I'm one of those guys that wants to hear another song. <laughs> Let's do it. Is that okay? Are we getting any requests? Um. Let's see here. I'll check my uh, my Twitter feed. Uh, I don't know anything. Well, um, show, us um, beautiful, show us your beautiful tremolo. You know, the classical mandolin, at least the romantic era of, of, of mandolin, is all about tremolo, right? Yeah, I, I actually don't have... A, I have some interesting questions that have just come. Oh, you do? Yeah, and, and you know, and, and maybe... Um, you know, uh, the the Northfield mandolin. How does it compare to other oh. stuff, other places like the Lore and that sort of thing? People are noticing this thing. This is beautiful mandolin. I've been playing a lot these days. Uh, created by the Northfield guys. I just love what they're doing. This is a small company, and they are they have managed to create a beautiful sound of mandolin, which is not insanely expensive. Many great mandolins that you try to buy are just so out of reach for most people. Yeah. And and these guys have cracked the nut in terms of find, finding a way to create a great instrument. Great loud chop, but a lot of sustain. I mean, of course, I play a Lloyd Lohr, you know, a lot of the times. It's a uh, 85-year-old instrument. So right. old instruments like that, the wood, you know, it's transformed over time, but uh, what's neat for me about working with these guys is that they're really listening to what I have to say about tone, and they're really trying to capture it. All the details that when I when I talk about well, I need more sustain, I want more punch out of the top strings. They go back to the workshop, send me another one, and and work on these details to try and bring it out. So it's an ongoing relationship, and I anticipate. It. The instrument's just getting better and better over the next few years. Okay, so. phenomenal. We are um, uh, we've covered a lot of ground here, and we're running uh, towards the end of of our hour. And yes, the pressure on Twitter to have you guys play is now unstoppable and unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> so I I am going to not get in the way anymore. Um, do you have something for us? Of course, we just we have lots and lots. You want to play? This is, let's, let's, let's play Gankino. Gankino or Silent Night. <laughs> We're going to play them both. Okay. Just a question. Right. Exactly. Why choose? We don't have to choose. Let's hear them both. Let's do a little holiday cheer. <laughs>
Wow. Fantastic. That was Bulgarian. Ha, ha, ha. As I said, Katerina's mother is Bulgarian, and she would spend summers there. And I so thought bluegrass was uh, was was fast. <laughs> that is amazing. That You're going to get it all between it's, the two of us, folks. Bluegrass, Bulgarian, Bach's over the beat. That's right? it. And beat. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's uh, that was wonderful. Um, I don't uh, I don't know if you have anything sort of to play us out. We've come to the rest of our hour. Well, but while well, I let you think about that. Um, I'd just like to sort of thank, say thank you to um, for joining us here, Mike. Um, and also, I'd like to recognize, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Katerina for joining us. And good luck with your new artist work. Thank you very school. much. I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, we have Scott Tickner from uh, uh, MandolinCafe.com. Scott, thank you for being here. Hey, Joe. All right, and um, two uh, artist work students who um, uh, did admirably on our broadcast, Philip Rundle and Tim Fowler. Nice. Thank you, guys. I look forward to seeing your net, your latest submission. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got up your sleeve? Yeah, what are you going to send next, Philip? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm oh, still sorry. trying to work that piece of bark out. Yeah. Sorry? It was a bluegrass thing, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm going to work on that. I'm working on the um, uh, Bury Me, uh, the Bury moment, me. That, that introduction, and the, and that's what I've been practicing recently. Oh, great. I, I look get forward to this bluegrass stuff done. Right on. Tim, what do you got up your sleeve? Oh, gosh, i got a bunch. I've got uh, more of the Bach A minor, but that's taking a back seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Woo. So, um, <laughs> you practice and sell your pieces from from the Svenanoa seminar, the classical. Oh. So, so I'm going to do that. I've got some bluegrass things I'm, I'm working on. So I, um, you're going to see uh, a little bit of Billy in the low ground. And nice. the waltz. <laughs> Very cool. And then I've got a little Christmas thing that I'm working a duet, uh, another uh, duet madness uh, with Steve. So. Uh, oh, great. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, that's good. <laughs> That's pretty funny. What he's referring to, folks, is that uh, some of the students have figured out how to play duets, even though they live in different parts of the country. Oh. And so one guy will record a, pe a piece, send the video to his friend, and then the, the friend will overdub to it. And so you'll have a split. I'll, I'll receive a split screen <laughs> with those guys jamming along with each other from oh, different parts. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty. Oh, that's fantastic. That's pretty amazing. And the technology will continue to evolve, and and we'll all just have to evolve with it. We have no, and 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 just enjoy the ride. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So well, thank you, Joe. And well, Scott, uh, Tishner, I mean, what can we say? What are you working on these days besides well, Bach? I know. Uh, I'm in a new gypsy jazz trio with a, oh. a guitar and a bass player, and, and uh, we have our first gig next Friday. So, ah, yeah, you know a bunch of those tunes. They fit on the mandolin. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, you know better. You know better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's just another long tunnel to look down, man. There's too many of them. You know, Bach, Shero. It's all good. There you go. Yeah, it's all good. Thanks for doing what you do. Um, and Joe, yes. uh, hats off to you for surviving that first part of the video. <laughs> I might have lost a couple hairs there, but uh. I did. But I, I do believe when um, it is played back, the record will show that I didn't use one obscene word. <laughs> not, not, not live, at least. <laughs> and I am somebody that will go there pretty quickly. Hey, Joe, this is nice. Joe, this is this is a cell phone, and it has video capability. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, to our suffering listeners, I really appreciate your hanging in with us, and um, <clears throat> you'll find that ArtistWorks.com is much more punctual about everything they do. Okay, we're going to sign off. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye. You bet. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks,